Greetings to you and welcome to Books That Make a Difference podcast. My name is Joshua Swanson. Today my co-host is not with us, so it's just going to be me. And once again, we are reviewing another amazing book, a book that makes a difference, titled The Volunteer Project, Stop Recruiting, Start Retaining. This book is written by Darren Kaiser, Christine Kresher, and Steph Whitaker. And interestingly enough, after I finished reading this book, I realized that the principles in this book really were similar to another book we reviewed several weeks ago called The Way of the Shepherd by Dr. Kevin Lehman and Bill Pentak. Now, as we talk about these things, you will see aspects um, that share the connection between this book, how there were some overlap between aspects of each book and Really, it revolves around the care and the concern that the ministry leaders, the organization leaders, need to have for the people that they work with, really caring for them, really loving them, really effectively ministering to and alongside them. Now, I love this book because it's written really for the sake of the volunteers in order so that they can have the best ministry experience possible as a volunteer, but it is directed at the ministry leader in order for them to engage with different leaders in the most appropriate and best way possible so that they can have an effective volunteer ministry that retains leaders instead of always recruits new ones. I'd like to read to you the the dedication um, of the book so you can kind of understand how this is really dedicated to and, and for the sake of the volunteers. Here's what it says. Dedication. If you've ever changed the diaper of a baby you've just met or sat through the elementary school concert of a kid who does not share your last name, we wrote this for you. If you've taken vacation time to sleep on a gym floor surrounded by stinky middle school students or spent a Friday evening with your arm around a crying high school student. Your heart is at the core of this book. If you know how to rock a fluorescent safety vest like you're walking the runway, it's your charisma that inspires us. If you wake before sunrise to arrive at your post or practice for hours to be prepared for a job for which you will never receive a paycheck, we dedicate this book to you. It's you who keep our churches, and organizations moving forward. Thank you, volunteers. So you see, even through the dedication of the book, this book has been made, has been constructed for the sake of the volunteers in a ministry. But it is for the, sa- it is for the ministry leader in order to help them do their best and engage their volunteers in the best way possible. Now, from these stories that we read in this book, the very, very many stories that are extremely relatable in this book, it is clear that each of these authors, Darren, Christine, and Steph, have experienced both the, the, the best parts and the worst parts of volunteer ministry. They've seen ministry to volunteers done really well, but they've also seen some negative, really harmful ways in which leaders, or maybe even they themselves, have engaged their volunteers in a detrimental way that was really unhelpful for the volunteer ministry. And, you know, sometimes it's the negative experiences that can be just as, as instructive to us in helping us understand how to relate to volunteers as the positive experiences, sometimes the negative experiences are even more informative because they help us to understand, wow, I don't want to make that mistake that that other leader made, or I don't want to make that mistake again. Very instructive aspects. Now, there were three words that really stuck out to me. Actually, they didn't stick stick out to me because these are words that when I finished reading, I, I really got a sense of of three words that really kind of define what is going on in this book. And those three words, all starting with the word, the letter C, are K, 
communication, connection, and care. And you'll see as we talk about these different things, there is the communication between ministry leader and volunteers. There is the connection that must be made between the ministry leader and the volunteers and between the volunteers and other volunteers and between the volunteers and those they are serving. So important. And the care that must be involved, the personal connection and care to show the value that these people are, to, to really personalize them. Treat them as human beings and realize that they are a great value and asset to the ministry or organization. Now, the book itself lists four strategies to help the leader effectively execute volunteer ministry so that they can have a culture of retaining volunteers instead of constantly recruiting new ones. These are the four strategies. Number one, celebrate the volunteer's significance. Number two, provide first class support. Number three, empower the volunteer's passions. So the first one, celebrate their significance. Now this first involves putting them in the right spot, really understanding them and understanding what their heart is, where their passions lie, where their skills and gifting is at, and then putting them in the place where they can be most effective and most helpful and most engaged and really, really fit into their spot well so that they can be in that spot and serve and, and flourish in that place for the long haul. This involves showing them also how valuable they are to the ministry that they're in, the difference that they are making, whether that's showing them numbers or sharing stories that show the the extreme impact that they are making on the ministry and on the people they are serving. Strategy number two, provide first class support. The primary tasks of this strategy is communicating well with your team and training them appropriately. Communication is absolutely essential and the volunteer who does not feel they are communicated well with will continue to fall further and further behind or by the wayside and not feel a part of the ministry. Also, training is extremely appropriate and important. So you will have volunteers that you recruit into the ministry and they will fit in like a glove. It's like they've done this ministry for years and maybe some of them have. But you'll have others who will struggle. They might not understand their place, know exactly what their role is, have difficulty really fitting in. And training is important, appropriate training is important so that they can really come to understand what it is that they are doing in their role, what their role is, and how they can be effective moving forward, training them for success. Strategy number three is fueling their feeling meaningful connections. This is building camaraderie among volunteers so that in the ministry setting, you have people who are engaging well with one another as they go about the ministry efforts. This is making the experience in the volunteer setting the best experience for them as possible. Helping them make connections to other ministry members on their team and also making connections with the students, the, the children, the men and women they are serving. It's really important. This is making it enjoyable and relatable for them so that they have fun, that they seriously are engaged well and enjoy the experience of being a volunteer in the ministry so that they stick around. This is also doing what you can, doing the best you can in the midst of difficult or tough circumstances where you kind of have to deal with some, some hard stuff. Making the best of it, um, dealing with problems and and situations that need correction in, in a positive, uplifting manner. Strategy number four, empowers, empowering their passions. Now, I love this. This emphasizes the volunteer itself. It really treats them as a person, helps them understand that you are recognizing them. It's like when, when people say, I see you. 
I see you. You're showing the volunteer that you see who they are, that you love them for who they are, that you love what they add to this experience in the volunteer ministry, what they are doing. And this is really the opposite of seeing them as simply a warm body that is filling a hole in the ministry. People will not feel valued if they think that they're just there because you needed some warm body to watch some kids or to push a button or to direct some traffic, whatever the case may be. They will not feel valued. They will not feel effective. They will not feel a part of the ministry that you are doing. This strategy really helps to address that. This is showing them that they are wanted, that they are needed. This is also allowing them the freedom within the ministry to explore different ways of interacting, different ways of going about the vision and the plan for the ministry with a little bit of leeway, but to, in order for them to stick still within the vision and the plan that you've established. And finally, this also involves um, cutting the red tape. So there are instances where volunteers have to deal with things that they're like, well, why do I have to do this? Or what is this even about? Aspects um, that are that are drudgery or or tenuous um, that aren't aren't really necessary for them to deal with. And this is about really helping them um, to to rid rid the ministry of those things so that those aren't aspects that volunteers have to deal with. Anything that you can do that kind of takes those things away is helpful. This also, I said finally before, this is finally. Finally, it also involves doing what one can to make their experience as a volunteer helpful for their everyday lives. Influential, no, influential, meaningful for their everyday lives. This is, means you, you, you relate their experience as a volunteer, their situation in their position as a volunteer, their relation with you as the ministry leader, their relation with other people on their ministry team, working with them, working alongside them, this is helping those interactions, those instances, those aspects help them in their everyday lives, whether it's their work life, whether it's uh, personally in their connections with others relationally, seeing that help across the board in different areas. And then this is finally all, again, finally, is also about the the ministry, the volunteers being able to, to multiply. So when you have volunteers who enjoy serving in the ministry that they're in, when you have volunteers who feel valued, who see success, who share wins with one another, who are encouraged when they understand from you or from others how they can more effectively go about their ministry, they'll be in a position where they can Talk to a friend or family member and say, hey, um, we could use some help in this ministry that I'm a part of. And it's amazing. The people that I work with, the students or the kids that I get to minister to, they, they need people to love them. They need the truth of Jesus Christ. And I think you would do really well helping that. And I think you could fit in so well and really minister to these people. Now, those volunteers will have such and much, a much better time about recruiting members into the ministry than the ministry leader ever will. Because some people who see the ministry leader doing the recruitment, they see someone as saying, hey, um, we have some concerns. We have a lot of needs for people to come and fill in to help out. Would you be available to do that? Could could we speak about what that might mean for you? Now, they might agree. But what would be even more meaningful is if those volunteers are naturally speaking 
of their time as a volunteer, inviting those friends and family, even family members around them to join them in that, that is so much more effective. So, so much more effective at growing the ministry. It's like self-recruitment. And if you do that, you don't have to do a whole lot. You can even, instead of specifically doing recruiting, you can ask your volunteers who are already loving what they do in the ministry that they're in and saying, hey, do you know of anyone who you could encourage to be a part of what we're doing here? If you are enjoying your time as a volunteer here so much, do you know of anyone who also might enjoy being a part of this? Because we could use more people like you to help us out in this ministry effort. We would love if, if you know of anybody. Amazingly different than cold recruiting. Folks, this is the volunteer project. Stop recruiting, start retaining. And it's another one of those books that make a difference. Thank you.